By the gods, Moors. Only you would take on so many wildlings on your own. I was afraid we'd arrive too late. Indeed. But at what price? My men are dead, as well as those from Kraken's patrol. In spite of our losses, it is a good day for the Night's Watch. Gorn and his curs would have bled our ranks for years to come. Despite all that, I owe my life to you and your men. My honor for the wall. My life for my brothers. Corin, there was another ranger with me. A little thief from Flea Bottom. I stationed him up there with his bow. Did you see him? Neither him nor his body. You're the only survivor we found. I see. I'll try to find out what happened to him. I must find him before reporting to Lord Commander Mormont. The Night's Watch lacks the strength it once had. The Wildling should never have been able to travel this far in the Gift. Take nothing for granted. Nothing lasts forever. We know that better than anyone. I'll have my men sweep the area until our builders arrive to block up the opening. We'll take care of the slain. Good luck finding the boy, brother. My thanks. I am greatly indebted to you, Corrin. Something happened here. If Gorn's men had killed Poddy, there would be traces of blood. He must have dropped his bow and abandoned this position when Gorn came upon us. I'll follow his tracks to find out where he ran off to. Hmm. The footprints show that Poddy was alone. There can be no doubt. The Craven wasn't being chased by wildlings. He just ran. He headed south through the forest, straight towards Maulstown. If I don't catch him before he gets to the village, I'll lose his trail for good. My lord, you're a brother of the Night's Watch, are you not? Yes. Why? No reason. I was just curious. It's rare to come across your saw alone in the forest. Tell me. I'm searching for one of my companions. Another black brother. Have you seen him? That I could not say, my lord. Perchance someone from my family has seen him. Your family? Yes, they're a bit further along. Over there. You're sure to find them. They've lit a fire. But what brings you here? Nothing special. We're always traveling, here and there. We buy, we barter, we sell. You should join them. These woods may be under the protection of the Night's Watch, but it is not safe to walk here alone. Very well, my lord. Good day, my lord. Have you perchance seen a brother of the Night's Watch passing through recently? A young man uh, dressed in black, eh? Yes, we saw him. He didn't stop, just took off running like a fox. Aaron, do you want to show our Night's Watch friend the way? Very well. Greetings, my lord, from the Night's Watch. Well played. Another fool falls into our trap. I don't like your tone. Oh, no reason to get upset. If you cooperate, we won't do you any harm. Give me your purse, your boots, your weapons, and all the rest of your valuables. You don't know who you are speaking to, scum. Indeed. A brother of the Night's Watch. Funny, isn't it? You're in charge of keeping the peace, and we've gone and robbed you. Have you ever noticed how sometimes you come across a man best left alone? I am such a man. That man is completely mad. Two little whelps and their father. I won't even break a sweat. You're right. After all, the more madmen, the merrier. This way, my friend. We have a customer. I prefer this. Since you don't wish to cooperate, we'll just help ourselves. Oh! Have mercy, my lord! Spare me, and I'll tell you where our stash is buried. You won't regret it. You'll be rich. Tell me where you hid it. I want details. We buried the coin we collected. 
It's in the area surrounding the campfire. You'll find it easily. Half of our loot is tucked away behind the bushes. There's a little hidden place, and the rest was buried near the hollow trunk at the top of the hill. Oh, I beg of you. Keep your promise and let me go. What promise? Your kind will feed the Night's Watch, and you will feed the crows. Ugh! Empty your pockets straight away. Do not come any closer. I will do as I please. I'm a deserter from the Night's Watch, and I'm being pursued by armed men. I've nothing left to lose. Hurry! Don't make me strike you. Get you. Ah, Mort, you're expected by the Lord Commander. He put me on lookout for you and ordered that you be sent to him as soon as you arrived. Moment, we'll have to wait a while. There are things I want to take care of before I go to see him. Very well, Mort. One of Half Hand's men told us of the events that occurred at Icemark. I know. Winter is coming. You may go warm yourself, Lothar. I shall go see Mormont. Jaw? Lothar told me that you wanted to see me as soon as I arrived. Yes. One of Quarren the Half Hand's men arrived before you and told me what happened at Icemark. Have you found Poddy, or his remains? Poddy deserted. I tracked him down in the forest north of Molestown, and managed to kill him just as he was attacking a young girl. I also took care of a couple of cutthroats I came across as they prepared to ambush passers-by. Raiders so near to Castle Black. If only we had enough men to send more patrols deep into the gift. So, not a single one of these green boys will have survived his first day as a brother of the Night's Watch. I know enough about what happened there for now. Mors, there is another matter we must discuss. I don't know if you noticed the soldiers with the blue tabards downstairs. They're the men of John Arryn, the King's Hand. Ah, the men you told me about before I left for Icemark. Those who came to meet me? Yes. According to their message, they were looking for one of the heroes of Stag's Mount. You are the only one here who fits that description. Do we know more about what they want from me? Yes. They brought me a letter written by John Arryn. I'll let you read it. You can see for yourself what it's about. My old fox hasn't changed a whit. Fifteen years without a word, and all of a sudden he writes to beg a favor of me. I'm not even surprised. Why are you receiving a personal missive from the King's Hand? He's an old friend. We fought side by side in Robert Baratheon's rebellion. He saved my life more than once. There is a passage that I don't understand. Mentions a girl, the darkness, and your wife, Serena. What does it mean? Aaron is an intelligent man. This is a message only I can decipher. During the war, when we fought together, I never once used the services of a whore. Aaron knew and would tease me for it. He liked to say that I feared the darkness that lurked in brothels. I would reply that the thought of my wife was sufficient to clear away any darkness. The girl he mentions in his letter must be hidden in a whorehouse. The only one I know of nearby is in Molestown. Old Aaron knows me well. Fifteen years later, I am still faithful to my wife. It is good that you honor the chastity of our order, Moors. But are you doing it for the right reasons? 
Our vows are clear. We must leave behind our wives and children. If you are true to your oath, it must not be out of love for Serena, but out of respect for the Night's Watch. I know, Jor. We have spoken of this countless times, but I am unable to forget them. Be that as it may, he must have felt seriously threatened to write such a cryptic message. This does not bode well. I conferred with his emissary, Sir Godric Donnelly. He convinced me that his mission did not conflict with our duties. And if we help them, Aaron will convince King Robert to send us the recruits, materials and supplies that we so sorely lack. Molestown is in the gift under the jurisdiction of the Night's Watch. You have my authorization to go there with Sir Godric. Thank you, Jor. I will finally be able to repay my debt to John Arryn. Remember, Moors, the Night's Watch does not interfere in politics. If, for some reason, you suspect that something is wrong, return to Castle Black. Very well. I will go find this Godric. I presume that you are John Arryn's men. The Lord Commander spoke to me about you. Indeed, I am the Knight Godric Donnelly, and this is my Lieutenant, Jared. And you must be Sir Moores Westford. Indeed. John Arryn described you as one of the true heroes of the Battle of Stag's Mount. Tis an honor to make your acquaintance. I knew someone named Moores Westford at one time, during the Baratheon Rebellion. A real son of a bitch, who I hold directly responsible for the death of my brother. I wouldn't have expected to find him at the wall. Hold your tongue, Jared. We're in Night's Watch territory here. Whatever our past quarrels, we're on a mission here. Please excuse this interruption, Sir Westford. If you have read the letter, you must already know our reason for being here. Indeed. I heard that John Arryn had fallen ill recently. How does he fare? It has been some time since we left King's Landing to come north to the Wall. No news has reached our ears since then. Nonetheless, knowing the Lord of the Eyrie, it is probably nothing. He has an iron constitution. Everyone knows that. I just hope that he has not aged too much. Very well. I believe I know where the girl is. The one John Arryn speaks of in his letter. Perfect. I knew we could count on you. Lord Arryn only gives his trust to men of great worth. Then tell me, sir. Where is she? What do you plan on doing when you have found her? She must be protected. I am sorry, but I'm under strict orders. I cannot speak of our destination. As long as you take her far from here, Castle Black is not exactly an ideal place for a young maid. According to the information given in the letter, there is no doubt about where the girl is. She is hiding in Molestown. In Molestown? The village we passed along the King's Road? Yes. To protect themselves from the constant cold outside, the inhabitants have built an underground passage. I will lead us there. We will no doubt find her there. Strangers are seldom seen in these parts. We'll ask the villagers about her. Very well. Let us get on our way. Hold on. I just received a raven with a message from King's Landing. Dark wings. Dark words. What is it? Let's go outside, Moors. I don't wish to speak of this in the common hall. What's going on, Jor? Hmm. Very well. The King's Hand, John Arryn, is dead. <laughs> <laughs>